Uh, good afternoon, everyone. The topic of my presentation is juxtaposition of atrial appendages on MDCT angiography. Uh, so juxtaposition has been called as a clinical curiosity, and it is characterized by presence of both the atrial appendages, that is the right and the left, adjacent to each other on the same side of the great arteries instead of encircling their roots. It was first described by Birmingham et al., and the prevalence of this anomaly is 0.28 to 1.1%. Uh, Multi-detector CT provides excellent quality images with high spatial resolution and as juxtaposition of atrial appendages is associated with the various cardiovascular morphologies, it can accurately depict the associated anomalies. Also, the images can be reconstructed in any plane and also we can obtain the volume rendered images. The main evidence in literature is in the form of two large autopsy series by Sir Van Prague et al. and one echocardiography based series by Lai et al. And there is lack of a comprehensive cross-sectional imaging based series in patients with juxtaposition of atrial appendages. So the purpose of the present study was to assess the morphological characteristics and cardiovascular anomalies which are associated with juxtaposition of atrial appendages on MDCT angiography. And also we focus on the fundamental differences between the two types of juxtaposition and also what is the significance of the associated anomalies in the morphogenesis. This was a single center retrospective observational study over a period of eight years and the MDCT angiography was performed using dual source CT scanner and non-ionic non idenated contrast medium was administered in a dose of 1 to 1.5 ml per kg and various dose reduction techniques were used for optimizing the radiation dose. All these patients were referred for MDCT after initial transthoracic echocardiography. Uh, for post-processing of the images, we constructed the multiplanar images, the maximum intensity projection images, and also the volume rendered images, which can be uh, seen in the diagram. A se segmental sequential approach was used to characterize the congenital heart defects, and the type of juxtaposition was classified according to the positional as well as the morphological classification. Uh, the right atrial appendage uh, was characterized as having a broad triangular shape and being more trabeculated and the left atrial appendage was finger like and slender. According to the positional classification by Dixon, it can be categorized as either having left sided or right sided. But according to morphological classification by Sir Van Prague et al, it has to be classified as we should call it as juxtaposition of right atrial appendage rather than mentioning as right or left sided because in uh, juxtaposition of right atrial appendage, the morphologic right atrial appendage will be superior to the morphologic left uh, atrial appendage as we can see in this diagram. And also it can be applied in the setting of situs inversus and situs ambiguous. So this classification seems more uh, correct. There were 129 patients with juxtaposition of atrial appendage and uh, left-sided juxtaposition was more common, which was seen in 96.1% patients versus 3.9% patients with right-sided juxtaposition. Uh, so analyzing the results of left-sided juxtaposition of atrial appendages, we had 124 patients and situs solitus was seen in 122 patients and uh, uh, 24 patients, that is 19.4% patients had dextrocardia and as expected in situs solitus and juxtaposition of morphologic right atrial appendage, the right atrial appendage was superior as uh, to the left atrial appendage and two patients had aneurysmal dilatation of the right atrial appendage. Also 40 patients had tricuspid atresia with loss of continuity between the right atrium and the left and the right ventricle and hypoplastic right ventricle was seen in 40.3% of patients with left sided juxtaposition. However, the most important anomaly which was seen in the present study was the ventricular arterial connections which were abnormal in 100% of the patients with abnormal relationship of great vessels and the most common conotruncal anomaly was presence of a double outlet right ventricle in which uh, the iota and pulmonary artery were seen arising from the right ventricle. The other conotruncal anomalies which were seen was detransposition of great arteries, transpose iota with pulmonary atresia and presence of a common arterial trunk. 
So excluding the patients with pulmonary atresia and in which common arterial trunk was present, the position of aortic valve with respect to the pulmonary valve was abnormal in all the 100 patients. And most of the patients had the presence of aortic valve to the anterior and left of uh, pulmonary valve and other uh, positions being, being anterior and to the right or directly anterior. Other anomalies which were associated were bilateral SVC, pulmonary stenosis and pulmonary atresia. So if we review the present literature, this was the uh, largest imaging series which is available till date. And in our series, as already shown, the most common anomalies were conotruncal anomaly, presence of dextrocardia, tricuspid atresia, and right ventricular hypoplasia. So uh, the embryogenesis can be postulated on basis of these anomalies as it can be either due to abnormal relationship of great arteries and also there is some role of underdevelopment of right ventricular sinus which leads to subnormal descent of the bulbar region as there was high incidence of dextrocardia and tricuspid atresia in the present series. Uh, now, discussing the results of the right-sided juxtaposition of atrial appendages, there were five patients and situs solitus was seen in 80%, right ventricle size was normal in all, and conotruncal abnormality was seen in 60% of patients. And uh, the anomalies were double outlet right ventricle, transpose aorta with pulmonary atresia, and tetralogy of fallow. Uh, and also uh, in 100% of cases, aortic arch anomaly was present, and there was one case of type A uh, aortic arch interruption, and PDA was seen reforming the uh, DTA. And reviewing the literature for right-sided juxtaposition, uh, accord, uh, with respect to the autopsy series by Van Prague et al., uh, the number was small in our series. So it can be attributed to the cause as in uh, the series, autopsy series, the median age of death was 36 days. So it can be quite possible that due to severe underlying complex congenital heart diseases, the patient suffered an early mortality and they did not present to our institute or did not undergo any imaging. And also, uh, as uh, in the present series, we did not observe any case of left atrial outlet obstruction. So as I've already told that it is a curiosity with a clinical implication. So the clinical importance of recognizing this anomaly is prior to various diagnostic and surgical procedures. It can be mistaken for an atrial septal defect. There can be erroneous catheter positioning during balloon atrial septostomy and during DTGA and juxtaposition of atrial appendages, we should carefully look for the tricuspid orifice. The limitations being the selection bias and a lack of statistical comparison between the two types. So to conclude, left-sided juxtaposition is much more prevalent than the right side and we should always look for the coexistent complex congenital heart defects which have implication prior to interventional or surgical procedure. Thank you.